recording. We are live. All right, it, and we'll do it live. <laughs> We're live. Beckman Unleashed podcast. I'm going to get into it. Number 10. Number 10. I'm getting right into it. Go ahead. Let's you do ready? it. I, I, we don't always have, we have things planned, obviously, and Eric's going to bring up a lot of random stuff that I don't even know about. He didn't want me to see it. He wants to put me on the spot, apparently, yep. but I do have something I want to talk about. And that is what I'm calling, I have not some notes for you guys, a prescription to eliminate any behavior. How do you like that? Any behavior? Any dog behavior. Dog aggression, attacking people, attacking you, counter surfing. Eliminate, this is not how to raise the greatest dog in the world. This is eliminating behavior. This is not how to train a sit. This is eliminating a problem behavior, right? got your pen and paper. I'm ready to roll. There are, there are some things that you might have to write down. You might want to write down, probably won't write down, but you should, if you mm -hmm. really want to eliminate any behavior, which you do. All of you with dogs want to eliminate behavior. All of you with kids want to eliminate a behavior. All right. Ready? Ready for this? Okay. I'm ready. You first have to identify the behaviors you want eliminated. And you might say, yeah, I want these 20 things identified. All right. Well, you don't have the time, the energy, and possibly the money if you're going to go with a trainer to, to eliminate 20 behaviors. You have to identify the three to five behaviors that you want to eliminate. You then need to rank the behaviors. So if it is dog, if it is attacking other dogs, it might be number one on your list. And it probably should be number one on your list if you want your dog around under other dogs. But it also might be counter surfing. So attacking other dogs may take a while. It's going to take some energy. It's going to take some time. It's going to take some planning. It's going to it's going to take some other dogs, possibly. It's going to take willing dogs. Where are you going to find those? It's going to take some time. So what I recommend is you can go for some low-hanging fruit. Okay? Why don't you uh, eliminate the counter surfing first? You can eliminate counter surfing in the time it takes you to watch this podcast. I guarantee it. And I'm going to get into how you do it from dog aggression to counter surfing. So you got to identify the problems and you have to have the want to get rid of them. I mean, to give you an example of people thinking they want to get rid of a behavior, but actually not really wanting to get rid of a, of a behavior. I, I went to people's homes for many years and the people I'd go into the home, they don't say it so much because now everyone comes to my facility, but in a home hundreds of times, people would look at me and they go, how do I get my dog from stop to stop jumping on the couch? Right. We want to get rid of behaviors. Mm -hmm. And I would always look at them and I would say, well, and I, I planned this after many times being asked this question, I, I learned what to ask them. And I'd say, I'd say, um, what do you do? Or do you ever let the dog jump on the couch? They just asked me how to get the dog off the couch. Mm -hmm. And then I said, do you ever let them? And their answer is the telling thing. They'd look down and they go, yeah. What does that tell you? That tells you that they actually know the main answer for getting their dog to not jump on the couch. They knew it. People don't know how to get rid of a lot of stuff. But they kind of knew that was the main chunk of the way to get their dog to not get up there is to not let their dog up there. So they knew the answer, but they yet still let it happen. Okay. So do you really want the behavior if they wanted the dog to not jump on the couch and they knew the answer to it, they would have stopped their dog from doing it, which is the dog gets up. They say, off. dog starts to jump up. They go, uh, -uh. they didn't do that. 50% of the time, 80% of the time, 20% of the time, they let the dog jump up there knowing it was the behavior would never go away. If they let it get up there 50% of the time, 20% of the time, behavior will never go away. So do you want it to, to actually go away? Okay. That's the first thing. So identify it. Um, rank it, rank the behaviors and know that you really want the behavior to go away. So now we're going to get into the heart of this, which is something I'm going to call, it's been, this term has been used before, contingent punishment. Okay. Now punishment is not like you think it is. Punishment does not mean some horrible thing. Being punishment means something. anything they don't want to happen. People, dogs, there's a continuum, super punishing over here 
barely punishing over here. There's a lot of things in between. Looking at a dog like this, like saying no to the dog, which is barely punishing, if at all, is just still punishment. Okay. So I'm using this punishment in a continuum. What does contingent mean? It means the dog understands why they're being punished, or I'm going to use punishment and corrections interchangeably. Okay. Even though they're different, we're going to kind of use them interchangeably. So I'm not just saying punishment, punishment, punishment all the time. Because some viewers of this channel are not that smart. And then they go, yeah, it's surprising, right? How dare you. They go punishment and they get all weirded out by the word punishment because they don't understand the operant term for punishment. So we're going to use corrections sometimes. Contingent corrections, contingent punishment. The dog understands. You watch my videos. Sometimes I blow your guys' ears out when I yell it, when I yell. Am I yelling because I feel like yelling in a dog? Am I yelling because I feel like blowing your eardrums out? I am yelling because the dog, when it goes at another dog, it needs to be, the behavior needs to be marked. Now, how do you mark a behavior when the dog doesn't hear the mark? Mm -hmm. Like a clicker, right? A clicker is a very unique sound. The dog hears it. They're, they're, the clicker people go, studies have been shown that the clicker goes right into the brain brain and they hear it. Well, they hear it because it's a unique sound they've never heard before. So yes, they hear it. They also hear my yell because they have to hear my yell because it is not fair to correct a dog when it doesn't know why it's being corrected and the behavior will not go away because the dog doesn't understand. So my yell is loud because I don't care about your guys' eardrums. I care that the dog understands and heard the marker because then it is followed up with the correction. They have to work together. They don't work. The punishment does not work if the dog doesn't understand why it's being punished. Counter surfing. I can, we can go through. This is a prescription to, a, to eliminate any behavior. You have to have the will to do it. And then you have to understand how to do it. And it's contingent punishment. Now, there's difficulty in this. And I'm going to give you that. But they have to understand. They have to hear the marker, which is the bridge. Bridge is the tap and that gap in time between the behavior, the bad behavior in this case, and the punishment. That's the marker. And I yell, hey. And then the dog goes for a hundredth of a second, sometimes goes, huh? And then I'm already walking towards the dog. And then I'm applying the punishment or the correction. And then they understand I went at that dog. That yell happened. It snapped me out of my brain. I looked at the guy. Then he sat, made me sit. And I was like, oh my gosh, okay. This, this correction is more than the reinforcement that I got from going at that dog. Now behaviors will eliminate. So is the correction, that's another part of it, is the correction more than the intrinsic or the reinforcement they got from the behavior they just did? And this is, I, I don't think any of this is tough. And I don't think it's going to be that tough in how I explain it to you. But some people think it's tough. Okay, counter surfing. Your dog gets a piece of steak or a piece of bread one in 10 times. They don't get it every time. It doesn't matter. The notion of getting it or seeing the snake steak or smelling the steak, they get reinforced every time they jump up on the counter. I've had so many people, you got to understand that just because they don't get something. So they're already getting reinforced every time they do it. So you actually have to go a little harder than you think you need to go with the correction, go a little harder to, to eliminate that behavior because they are getting reinforced. How about somebody coming over to your house and your dog jumps on them? The dog jumps on the person. Your dog is happier when people come over if your dog is jumping on people with happiness and you want to eliminate that behavior. They're like happier every time a human comes over than you've like ever been in your life, essentially. They're happy. It's off the charts. You don't even understand your dog's happiness. So dog jumps on the person. The person pets the dog for half a second, or maybe looks at the dog, or maybe touches the dog and looks at the dog. Imagine the reinforcement that dog got from that jump, that jump. Then you go, no, off. Where does that lie in the punishment spectrum? The reinforcement the dog got is actually way over here, super reinforcing. The punishment you applied, here's neutral, is right here. Behavior ain't going away. You got to get that punishment. You got to go a little harder. Hey, you got to continue to punish me. You got to timing and you grab him sit them down and they got to go, oh, okay, dude. Now, this is tough. 
this is a tough thing to do because there's guests coming over because there's, yo, oh my, I don't want them to think I'm being mean to my dog. I get it. You're not being mean to your dog, but also the timing of it is tough, right? Because the dog's out of its mind at the moment. So that's why I have the leash step on method. I did a video on that two months ago, three February. months ago, February. How many months? Yeah. Whatever, but how many months ago that is. That takes all the guesswork out of this thing. I developed the method. I'm not saying no one has ever stepped on a leash. I don't know anyone else who talks about the leash step on method. It takes the guesswork out. The dog gives himself corrections and the dog does not get the reinforcement from the person. Okay. All my methods are meant to be done in a timely manner and as least punishment as we can possibly get away with. And if it requires more punishment, we won't go there. Okay. We will take the longer road to get rid of the behavior. If the behavior, if the punishment required, required sort of exceeds a certain level. And this is adjusted per dog mm -hmm. as well. And there are some people who can't do any of this. Okay. Contingent punishment. They have to understand, and then you have to apply the correction in a timely manner. How about your dog barking, trying to attack, biting, lunging at people and dogs? Here's where the difficulty comes in on this. And I'm going to try to explain to you the difficulties of all of these because there's nuance to all of these, but you got to understand the basic framework. Do you want to get rid of it? And then contingent punishment. Okay. You got to understand reinforcement. Your dog barks and lunges at a person. That person backs up. You give the dog a correction, punishment. You think you corrected your dog, but your dog ends up closer to you and leaning on you. You didn't correct the dog. You didn't punish the dog. The dog got everything he wanted and that he didn't care about the correction because a correction is not nearly as bad as the reinforcement he got from being next to you. That's why I do the out of circle, out of the circle of trust method. Why a video two weeks ago, I told the guy, you should not correct the dog and have him still on you. He needs to be away from you. Then the dog goes, well, that per and the person left or the dog left. So they go out, ah, the person left. I'm closer to daddy. Yeah. Daddy got mad at me. I don't really care because I didn't really want to meet that person anyway. I'm, I'm closer to daddy and the person left. He got everything he wanted. So you got to, you can give the correction if you want. Then you bring the dog back. You maybe sit him four feet behind you, tell him sit, stay. Then you go shake the person's hand. And the dog goes, I want to be up in the mix and lunge at that person. Tell him, get out of here. The dog starts to go, what? I don't get to be near you. Now you've actually done something that is punishing. Now you've actually done something the dog doesn't want. The correction doesn't matter a lot of times. Does this make sense? Oh, it does make sense. Did I miss many steps? Because I kind of went over this briefly with you before I said it. I, I know I went through it quick. I could pick any. I could pick any behavior. You pick a behavior. Yeah, I think the way I explained it me. was way better. But I mean, you did a pretty good job. Yeah, well, you explained it in like banking, months. like systems, terms of task orientation, and and good job. Can. My brain doesn't think like that as much. I wish it did. And I wish I was like, okay, guys, get your pen out and write all that. I'm going to get to the points, hopefully, in my own way. Can I can I recap what I think you said? Yeah. And then give me a behavior Okay, I that will. I didn't touch on. So first you need to... Okay. You're saying... Eric's I can help brain you. works differently in some ways better than mine as far as like whatever the hell you know in your brain yeah. about organization. Yeah. Go ahead. So... You're saying I can eliminate any unwanted behavior or virtually any unwanted behavior, right? Yes. Then you're saying the first thing you need to do is identify that behavior. What is it that you want corrected? So maybe there's three things that your dog does that you can't stand. Yeah, because you, you can't get rid of 10 things because you don't have the time. Or a thousand or a million, right? Because there's there's the limited resources issue. Yeah, you have 15 is even too much. Yeah, so, so you have to create, you know, yeah. like what you called the low-hanging fruit or just... Right. If you maybe you don't have a job and you have a, a lot of different stuff going on in your life, you're like, well, I have a lot of problems, but the job is number one. I need to get a job. I just lost my job. I need to get a new job. So, okay, just go with the me the working out job. every day is number three on that list because yeah. I need a job. Yeah. But I do want to work out. Yeah. But it's not, it's not the hierarchy. So you got to get the hierarchy. Yeah. So, but before that, you got to just like, what is basically, as Joel would probably say, what is unacceptable to me? 
So you can, maybe there's three things that are unacceptable dog behavior. Then you need to prioritize that. What are the three main things that need to get fixed and in what order? And then from there, you the, the, the word you use, um, or what I was thinking of is the punishment has to fit the crime, right? So when you, good, good when you um, if you have a penalty where you get 90 days probation for robbing a bank, right? You you're might gonna rob have, another bank. You're going to have a lot of bank robberies, right? Because yeah. you, it's, you're better off robbing the bank than you are <laughs> not robbing the bank. Yeah. So that that's how I think about it. Whereas, um, you that's know, true. and I think that was kind of how we were probably raised in the sense of when you talk back or you do something, the the speed at which you were corrected as a child was like, you know, kids are meant to be, what did they say? Uh, seen and not heard <laughs> Yeah, was the term. So that it's was like, a little before us. I was, my, my uncles were like that, but uh, especially on one side of the family, but it's like you, you were talking about that gap and I was thinking yeah. the word delay, right? How, yeah. cause it's a bad thing, right? How long between the ne negative behavior yeah. and the correction is there? Yep. And if it's yep. a split second, it's perfect, right? Yep. If it's uh, an hour, then the dog is, you're running into this contingent, uh, yep. what did you call it? Contingent punishment. Punishment is like, okay, dad's mad. I don't know why he's mad. So the dog is confused. Yeah. Have you ever seen me or any of the people, the pod, as we call the it, pod, yeah. ever seen me sit back and just go, hey, 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 no, no, no. There is a hey, that's a snap. And then this is to your point. And then I'm all, I'm already walking up to the dog. It's all one flowing motion. It's all one thing with a marker that snaps him out of it and marks the incorrect behavior. Then I'm already moving towards the dog. And then I can make a choice. If the dog goes, oh my God, sorry, my, my point is made. But I'm not going to sit back and go, hey, 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 and yell, yell, yell. I always have to move in. And then each time I do it, I have to move in less. Hey, and the dog goes, oh my God, I'm sorry. Because 10 times before that, you came and grabbed he me knows. and told me sit. Well, now you don't need the punishment. So the punishment is like almost could be another word for it could be like an intervention, right? You're doing some type of intervening on the situation. Yeah. But they, now, they don't want the intervention. Yeah. They don't, yes. they don't want it. But so like yes. you, you know, you can intervene in different ways, right? So you can intervene with you can, yell, and you fade the out the intervention. Yes. Yeah. And so I think about, so unwanted behavior, I did like your, um, I did want, I did like your, um, couch situation so if we could like explain okay um this is i'm gonna pretend like i'm an actual customer right so i've got a problem with my uh dog jumping up on the couch so i i want to yeah. get rid of this behavior yeah but i do like that like when we watch a movie oh, you, like snuggling. you know like like maybe the wife's not home and i yeah. have the puppy is on and it can hang out with me right i could pet the dog yeah. and okay. we just feel closer but i want to get rid of it okay Eric. Do, you know what i mean so yeah, I, I do, i'm motivated oh you are yeah if you let your dog up there one in 10 times, you're going to, you're going to, it's going to take much, much longer if ever for you to um, not have the dog up there. You have to make it, you, you really do have to make a choice because variable reinforcement kicks in at that point, which actually s lengthens the period of time before behavior will what's called extinguish. Mm -hmm. So if you let him up there one in five times, he's going to try to get up there for longer. I would rather you let your dog up there every time then not then let him up there one in five times yeah i think the it gets back into the contingent punishment piece which is your dog has to know why it's being punished and if 50 percent of the time he's allowed to hang out on the couch and get pet you know get petted or whatever the term is for that and 50 percent of the time you yell at the dog for being on the couch you're confusing your dog he doesn't yeah. understand or she doesn't understand yeah what what you're trying to teach them Yes. And so that's, that's really just bad training, right? When you are, yeah, you're unclear on what yeah, you you're want. unclear on what you want. And I think what you said earlier to kind of finalize it is you're saying you viewers, you need to be clear on what you want also. Yeah. So like, you know, not just with the dog, you need to be clear with yourself. Yeah. What do you want out of this dog? And then do you, you need to come for? up with a plan of action. Do you have access to your dog has dog aggression? You have access to good dogs. If you don't, that's hard. That's why I'm busy and people, someone drove from Maine last week. bro. I love that. Maine. I love it. I was like, okay. Like, put the I dog hope. in the car. We're going from Maine. Yeah. 
Yeah, they drove out. What is that? Seventy hours? It's, just, it's the farthest possible point. Yeah, you think Key Sandy West? Echo. No, Key West is closer. Yeah, it is. You think Alaska is closer? Yes. yes. Uh, could be Northern Alaska. Yeah, I mean, Maine. You don't, I don't get think... farther than Maine. Yeah, it's pretty tough, right? That is the literally across. I once dated a girl from Maine who couldn't ride a bike. Did you break up with her for that reason? <laughs> I was like, your lack of bike riding is why this is over. She was an like, adult who couldn't lack ride of a bike. Coordination, maybe she could, an adult who couldn't ride a bike. Yeah, that's unacceptable. Uh, that's an unacceptable to, behavior to me. Um, so, okay, let's uh, let's. Um, we were talking a little bit about the buy-in piece of it, or I was talking about yeah, it, yeah. but like the yeah. idea of, you know, can we get a united front in the household on what the problems are, and agree on a plan of action? for this issue, right? Yeah. Like let's not let's not treat the dog when yeah. it gets up on the couch and then, you know, with one family member and the next oh. one does the opposite. Right, right. Inconsistency within the family. Okay, idea, right? Do you think that these that the pod people understand I know I can be more prescriptive and talk about every behavior you want to get rid of. I, I do you think that they understand what they need to do for any behavior or do I need to go through every single behavior? We are, it is a two hour podcast. The only thing I want you to share with is, okay, I want, we were talking about this a little bit before, but the idea of the recall, you know, oh. getting your dog to come to you, right? So to say, you know, well, part of this is looking at the resources that are available to solve the problem. This podcast is one, but you have almost 500 videos. Yeah. Well, can I say, let yeah. me say something else. There are behaviors that require, and someone might go, no, they all require, no, they don't. Attacking a dog does, a, a dog attacking a dog does not require reinforcement, like real reinforcement. Like it is a basically a, a corrections based thing because it is based on being oftentimes, forget what you heard based on wanting to hurt a dog many times for no reason because they just say get out of here dog and i'm gonna attack you so re recall and loose leash walking also require reinforcement so to your recall point there is a sort of contingent punishment aspect to it but there is also this other aspect that is reinforcement now you is that the that positive reinforcement part? what is that the positive the positive reinforcement part yeah i and i'm kind of focusing on like counter surfing Force free trainers will say the stupidest thing in the in the world and they'll go, Well, reinforce your dog every time it's not counter surfing. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, one, I don't want to reinforce that dog. All, yeah, it covers a lot of ground. That's it. How about we just wait for that one half of one percent of a day when they are counter surfing? We eliminate that, and then we don't have to do this rigmarole of constant treats around the counter. How about we just do that? Because it ain't mean to go, hey, and go grab the dog, sit down. And the dog goes, okay, sorry, I won't get up on the counter again. So my point is, there are things that are best done with a timely correction, which is another way to say contingent punishment, and aren't reinforcement. But there are things that need reinforcement. Recall would be one of those. Need a lot of reinforcement. It's not even 50-50. It's 70-30. It's 80-20 reinforcement. 80% reinforcement. So I think I used positive reinforcement with my three-year-old yesterday. Tell me if I'm right. I'm sure you use it every day with your. Family. I do a lot of negative reinforcement. I'm pretty sure, which well, is that's yelling. Not, I mark the behavior. That's not negative reinforcement. What's it called? Positive punishment. Positive punishment. Why? What's the difference? Let's talk about. Positive this. means to add. Okay, and then negatives to take away. Yeah. So negative reinforcement is on the flip side of like positive punishment of taking away a privilege or something. Well, things no? get we know they get flipped. So the negatives. They, if you say positive reinforcement, it's very simple. Positive punishment is very simple. To add something reinforcing, to add something punishing. Very simple stuff, right? Po excuse me, positive reinforcement, positive punishment. To add something reinforcing, to add something punishing. The negatives are weirder, okay? Negative reinforcement is to take away something bad. To take away some negative... Something bad 
but yet okay, reinforcement. So it's completely flipped. It's flipped. There's still the takeaway part of negative, but it's flipped. So you're, explain you're, it to a to a, a seventh grader, or uh, not to a seventh grader, but about a seventh grader. A seventh grader gets in trouble, and the parents do something. Okay. To the, what, uh, what's an example where they take something away? Okay. I'm going to time out. Use time out, for example. And this is where Skinner and all the, oh, operant conditioning is the greatest thing ever. It's not. The, 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 there's There's some weirdness in it, okay? It is not that. Yes, we use it. Yes, we give paychecks. Yes, we say thank you to your wife and to your co-host. And yes, you give your kids candy for being good. And yes, you take them to... Yes, this this is in life, but there you should not live by consequences, which is what operant conditioning is, behavior based on consequences. Consequences being but reinforcement. Positive reinforcement is part of the operant conditioning. Yes, yes. So, so you asked you asked me to go through them, correct? No, um, I wanted asked? to know like negative... Oh. Reinforcement. Oh, timeout. A timeout. The kid does something. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you go, go to your room or you yell at them. Yeah. That's positive punishment. Because you're adding punishment. This, the punishment. Yeah. Well, they go to their room. Let's say you were so scary, they wanted to go to their room. That's actually how it really is for me. Yeah. So you think it's a punishment. They're like, hell yeah, I want to get away from this guy. So you actually applied. I mean, they willingly went so in the there. Negative. So it's a weird thing. So then it was, it was, it was, it was negative reinforcement. You are the punisher, the punishment, mm -hmm. and they were removed from you. So it was reinforcing. reinforcing. So it benefited them. So that that's where operant conditioning gets weird. Yeah. It's like you think, oh. That's actually punishing. No, it's not because you were the scary guy who they wanted to get away from. And many other instances of that where he can go through this. So was it willingly done? Did you, did you, uh, it's just, it's. So here's what we did. Here's what did thing. we do? So my daughter has a problem oh, of not eating her dinner. And so made steak, rice, vegetables. This is a good steak. Costco steak. Don't make greater vegetables, Bo. I actually just started eating vegetables at my age. But anyways, long story short, it's a good steak, like good steak oh, on the Traeger smoker. Costs money. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, well seasoned, cut it in little pieces. Her mom cuts it in little pieces for her. And, you know, her younger brother just crushes it. Her older sister crushes it. Everyone does. And she just is like, doesn't eat. But she gets reinforced because people are giving her other food after she doesn't eat her dinner oh, right so then she's problem in my house yeah so why why would she eat her dinner when she could get a popsicle later on right or before sometimes so she eats her dinner oh good shockingly okay so there is actually deeper than i thought it was there was a bribery that goes on which is my older daughter gives her coconut water if she'll eat her food and she kind of your daughter game. likes coconut water yeah i don't know that's my pretty wild says, isn't it coconut water is not do. that good no it's weird tasting. yeah okay go ahead um and so then she eats her she eats her um, food or she's yeah. almost completely yeah. done with it. And I go, yeah. my ate her food. Yeah. Great. Yay. And then we start clapping and then I was like, oh. ah. and then everyone starts clapping. Go, Great job, Maya. Right. So like we're trying to reinforce that behavior. That is positive reinforcement. And right. Absolutely. Okay. I don't know. This. And what you did is you had variability in the reinforcer. So if every night you go, here's your popsicle for eating your steak, it's cool. She might be over popsicles. You ever see kids when the whole family claps for them? They light up and they go like, oh my God. Yeah. You varied up the reinforcement, which is a key to this stuff. So you made an impression on her brain. Another popsicle is cool. Being clapped for is maybe cooler. You, you know what I love which about Which then that? the behavior will happen again because there's variability in the reinforcement. I actually use that with my oldest daughter through her um, chores and stuff like that. Yeah, but, yeah. I'll hit her off with like, like she does like some $80 worth of work. And I'm just like 150. You did so amazing. Yeah, that's exactly. It's right. like, uh, that's called jackpotting. It's like going to, yeah, is it? It's like going to the yeah. casino. That's what I was going to say. It's a form of variable reinforcement or variability in reinforcement. Variable reinforcement is different. Variable reinforcement would be you're, you're actually v varying the reinforcement on the number. Of, so, so variable reinforcement would be like, she has to do it 
four times and then maybe you jackpot her with like a thousand dollars like you would create this little worker you, it, it has problems i've seen the problems i've seen it in dolphins i've seen it in dogs by certain trainers who i will not name in here but i might one day if they make me mad the bus. where where that you know you potter potters know they're not the potters they're the pod oh so it's not so, your wife is it no no the pot the pod oh. who walks who okay. watches so um, you could create this daughter who's like constantly looking for stuff because she doesn't know when a thousand a bucks is going to be popped on her, but you're also going to create some nuttiness, but you might create the craziest little good worker you've ever seen. But I, does I, that make sense? You can go nuts with this stuff of variability and, well, and jackpotting to where you're creating there's something levels, you don't though. want. Yeah. So for instance, if yeah. you like, if you really if someone really helps you, like they babysit your kids and then it's so important to you and so valuable and that they did such a great job that you're like, Hey, 40 bucks oh, is not enough. Like we're giving you a hundred, sure. but if it's I'm like saying, if you went nuts, but if you said, Hey, it's 40 bucks, here's 10 grand. <laughs> like <laughs> you're creating confusion, right? <laughs> like they're like, okay, now you're going to get weird behavior, right? That's right. Yeah, it's like seventy X or something. Ridiculous. They're like outside your door. Like, yeah, uh, are you leaving? I could watch your children, and you're like, this isn't normal behavior to be out here. Later. They're like, I watch your kid from from outside while you guys are at nighttime. You're like, so yeah, you can create some problems. Yeah, um, I've seen dolphins. They come over to the edge of the pool, and they're like offering every behavior. They're like, ah, ah, and they're like, they just want some fish, right? Well, yeah, but but SeaWorld's so into jackpotting and variability and reinforcement and variable schedules of reinforcement that they create. What does SeaWorld want to do? They want the most high level training and tricks of there are for the people. They don't much care about the fact that the they do. They're creating I shouldn't a little bit that. of nuttiness. They're creating a little bit of nuttiness. I've yeah. seen a very well-known force-free trainer that had a dog and it was out of its mind with offering behaviors because the trainer was so operant and it was horrible to watch i'll be honest with you and i yeah. will not say their name yeah we are we're very careful not to throw people under the bus that don't podcast. deserve it like 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 she's she or he is a nice person mm. i like the person yeah um so i like this i think we could keep this going as like yeah. a theme do you have any final words on this or should we double no. dabble into some other? This went stuff? into operant conditioning and other training, but it was, it was sort of how to get rid of a behavior. And I hope you can expand your brain and go, Oh, he didn't mention this behavior. I'm, but I, I understand the principles and I'm going to apply those. And then the behavior should, should yeah. go away. I don't care what it is. Yeah. I don't the care. Speed. I think a lot of people don't get the speed of correction properly. Don't you think they think they're being fast at correcting a behavior, but they're actually way slower than you would be. The, or, it's not even the, the, yes, the, the speed of being on it. And then the approach from you, it doesn't have to happen. You don't have to run, but the things in their brain, they have to be connected. Mm -hmm. The yell, which it doesn't have to be yell, right? And clicker training, marking. it's a click. And then a reinforcement It's something, a bark. And then, something else happens. Oh, now he's coming towards me. Oh, now he's telling me to sit and I'm, he's doing it in kind of a, Oh, you're being awfully serious guy. <laughs> Those things together create the contingent part of punishment. I have an idea. They for understand it. What is it? Make fun of, uh, the force free positive reinforcement folks. Oh, I love that. I get, already. I have, I get one of those goofy bags. Remember those goofy uh, treat bags that we showed at a uh, I remember Cahoots. shout out Cahoots. Oh, we did a video um, on, I, what I, oh, I talked to him on my favorite. You said they bag. were so dorky. Oh, like dorky. Treat bags. dorky. Yeah, they so are dorky. We have dorky treat bags, but rather than training dogs, we train people and we just have a big, huge bag oh, of M&Ms. Yeah. And then literally you're like, yeah, good job, Joel. Good job, Joel. Good job, Joel. Good job. It was just, just firing M&Ms at you. Like, That's a great day. idea. Like who would do this? Like, this isn't life. Yeah. It's great. You're just like, Hey, this is life with your dog. Great job sitting on the couch. Yeah. Where are you going? You're going to do your homework. Great job walking to do your homework, right? Like <laughs> you can take it to absurd levels. It's kind of like great job. Not lying. It sounds like something on the you office. You didn't right? lie. Like here, yeah. I'm just going to constantly give you, how about when you lie? I go, can't freaking lie. 
Well, what about that? I was actually thinking while you were talking about that, uh, about your, your kind of what I call a monologue. Great job not hitting anybody today. Yeah. Uh, it's I was, fantastic. I was trying to think about um, when you were talking about, now I probably lost my train of thought, but you're talking, so talking about the uh, monologue. Um, no, I don't remember now. It was, ah, it was I so cut good. you off it was right so in good. the middle, dude. It was, it was gonna be okay, you think about it while I say something. Yeah, yeah. I actually don't have a lot to say. I got a bunch of stuff on my phone, but that's what I'm saying. Okay. It's, it's you, you're driving this train at this point. Okay. That's Eric's going to pop. And then if you remember, remember, Eric's going to, um, so yeah, I, I'll give that, I'll give up on that. So first of all, what we have to do is we have to get into the apology segment and the apology segment this time is we want to apologize to every Rottweiler owner for our for my breed of the week rottweiler segment where you talked about like six movies that rottweilers were in <laughs> and like yeah they're a lot like Dobermans that are from germany and, and then we just like we we just talked about uh natural disasters for like two hours we're sorry that the breed of the week was so underwhelming yeah well, rottweiler. it wasn't the it was a great topic it just didn't get covered Bro, really. i was thinking about that i talked about i was thinking about what i said about rottweilers and then the commenters were like you didn't talk about rottweilers very much you, you just talked about the sopranos after that and i was like yeah there wasn't like i'm not here i'm here i'm not going to read wikipedia on on live wikipedia on on this podcast and bust out rottweiler stats and so i thought about what i said and i was like kind of like i kind of said what i had to say like there's other yeah. things that i'm going to add right now that because i did think about like what else could i have added but like breed of the week is not like i don't want it to be yeah like a wikipedia reading or what is it akc or whatever the yeah AKC, a but, regurgitation but i uh, could have said more and i could have said some cool stuff like what i thought about with rottweilers so apology segment good apology to the rottweiler owners and then we'll get into more apologies mm -hmm. by the way the apology segment is a joke one of the commenters was like you shouldn't apologize they like didn't understand the apology the apology segment is a giant joke yeah we don't apologize about hardly anything our apology segment is a joke or is it or is it we apologize to fraser we crapped on the show fraser uh and then we which dessert so we're not we're not apologizing for that but do we have anything great to say about Rottweilers, Rottweilers. before so, I jump into the next one? Because I already have another one. I he, didn't tell you this time. Here's what I thought. And that's what I think people want and what people are interested in. The dominance level of Rottweilers. I just thought about that randomly. It's like my opinion. Mm -hmm. It's not a Wikipedia thing. or a... So I'd put the dominance level of a Rottweiler just above Dobermans and just below Akita's. I mean, these are interesting little stupid facts that I've from 100 Rottweilers. Oh, here's another thing. Rottweilers kill a lot of people. What do you mean by a lot? Well, that's a good question. You don't Because good answer, luck finding death yeah. by dog stats. By breed, yeah. That's by breed not, stats. There's one that kills way more people than any other breed, and it ain't even close. And we all know who that is. You know what's funny about that? Is I think you just gave me an amazing segue to my next breed of the week. Oh, I, I'm guessing who it is. Well, we'll start with they kill way more people than anyone I'm else. I'm not saying what you're saying is true. I'm just saying. All right. You could see right here for the breed of the week. See what I wrote there? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so they so, said, this is actually from the comments. They no, said, let me finish my oh, go, 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 go. So we're going. They kill a lot of people. Why do they kill a lot of people? They don't kill as many as pit bulls. They don't kill a lot of people because. They're terrible dogs. It's a numbers game. There's a fair amount of Rottweilers and they're big. That's why I think they're number two on the on that list. Yeah. There's a lot of them. And so it's one reason pits are number one on the list. There's a lot of them, but Rotties are big. So if you think of big dogs, tell me a big dog that there are more of than Rottweilers. Like a big dog, like a hundred plus dog. German shepherds are not that big. The size matters in human death. Yeah. It's, a, it's like the, they go, well, chihuahuas, chihuahuas buy it a lot more. It's like, yeah, yeah well, people uh, don't die when they get bit by a chihuahua. Yeah. Although five uh, wiener dogs that killed somebody like a year ago, five wiener dogs yeah. killed somebody, they killed somebody. How? They probably person fell over and they just, I guess, I don't know, that sounds, but it did. I believe like it did happen. I can't Thomas. believe everything you hear, but I do believe that did happen. So Roddy's, there's a lot of them. They're big. So the size thing matters with 
people deaths. Um, so anyway, that's my Rottweiler spiel. Now I just angered Rottweilers. They're like, they don't kill anybody. So I don't know. The, the thing I saw was like, they're number two. So we made up, we apologized and made up to the Rottweiler community for giving him a little bit more meat on the bone as far as the oh, breed of the week. More. And then you insult them and we yeah. can, we can apologize yeah. again for that next week. Right. Yeah. We'll apologize to them next week. So, yeah. So one of the people ongoing was, talk, was talking about Rottweiler's my, my second favorite dog. Yeah. Now you love Rottweilers. I've heard you talk about this offline too. Love them. So they say love am, them. am staff slash pit bull. And I'm thinking it's American Staffordshire Terrier is what they're referring to. Yeah. Right. Have you heard my pitch on the fact that people always say, american bulldog they go it's not a pit bull it's an american bulldog and i'm like that looks like a pit bull to me bro well well it ain't a bulldog you, well well do you think they're lying or do you but uh, an american bulldog is it's not a, a pit bull. it's a misnomer i think they're, they're they're a totally different dog don't you think it looks just like a pit bull no no now you might have seen one that's like a pit American Bulldog mix. mix, and then you're like, that looks like a pit. Well, because it does look like a pit, but they're a different dog. I, you seen my American Bulldog videos, right? They've got tons of views. Yeah, like, yeah, like mm -hmm. a year ago. So those are American Bulldogs. Those are this one. Very is an American Bulldog. It's an American Bulldog. It has a very pit bullish face. Some oh. of them look a little more bulldogish. Yeah, that's an American Bulldog. But this is the number one Wikipedia thing. Like that looks like a pit bull. Number two on Google, bro. Yeah. Yeah, that looks more pit like. But listen, this whole like pit mix, pit like these dogs get a little bit of pit in and they get that boxy head and the then jaws, they are right? called a pit mix. Like, and people get nutty with this stuff. Like, I'll be like, oh, this is a pit bull. That's that not a pit bull. bull. Like, okay, sorry, it has pit bull in it. Like, I, I don't know. It's, you know, true pit bulls are, and then people like, in order to get like into their housing, like they don't call it a pit bull. They call it an American Staffordshire Terrier. And then that somehow helps them get into their housing. That doesn't, doesn't allow pit bulls. Like it's, 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 it's the wild west, dude. It's, it's craziness out there with this breed stuff. And there's no, there's no answer. Do you have a broad, do you have a broad list of breeds or names for, things that you would all generally refer to as a pit bull like a i mean pit bull is isn't you pit bull a bit of a yeah a, a broad umbrella term it's almost like a shepherd kind of yeah it is you're right it's not like a it's not like it is effect. a thing like the blue nose pit like it's like it's a pit but, but there, there's a certain color like but like an American Staffordshire Terrier is actually an AKC dog, isn't it? Yeah, not? it's like a small little But they're thing. real small. Yeah. Like they're not, like you, when you think of pit bulls, I always think a yeah. true pit bull is a little smaller than most people would realize. That's true. Like, like they are very low to the ground. Yeah. So Bro. tell me all the good things about a pit bull. Uh, <laughs> I've got one. They look badass. That's a good thing. Don't they? Yeah. They look, I, I go, that's a good looking dog. They look like they're in shape. Yeah. When they're good, they're good. Bro, they're, and there's a lot of good ones. Yeah. Well, <laughs> not loyal to the mailman, though, right? Well, they're loyal. Are they more loyal than the German Shepherd? Like, are they loyal? Like, I don't know. There's a hierarchy there's a of loyalty. Right? And, and are they at the top? No. They're not at the top. But the, the I mean, what is loyalty? Like, there's all these questions. Pit bulls, when Owner they're good, loyalty. they're good. They're sweet. They give like good kisses. Like they have like a weird mouth. Yeah, like like they have like weird. like when they lick, they like it. I just there's something about it. It's different. If that makes sense. So, but are they loyal? They they love their people. Their owners. Yeah, they love their people. Does that mean they're going to protect their owner? where a German shepherd or a Rottweiler wouldn't No. Mm. It's like, I, what's I, your criteria for loyal? Like <laughs> ripping off someone's face. <laughs> is that like yeah, thanks, that ain't loyalty? <laughs> thanks. I just wanted you to bark at them. Right. Like, <laughs> exactly. uh, I want to apologize to, to the, people. the audio people too, because sometimes we make jokes and we roll our eyes or we do funny faces and then you miss out on it. So you don't get the depth of the joke. Sometimes you're going to apologize. 
let's just make this an apology podcast. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for being alive, right? <laughs> That'll be the... All um, right. So you want pit? Is that that? I want to talk about pit bulls. This is a breed of the week is pit bull now. And so okay. I want to cover them a bit. No, I know. I Because last time I thought Rottweiler, I told you right before, and, and we, we were going to spring it. And then you were like, you were like, hey, yeah, you told me right before and you exposed me. And so five minutes. So now I'm like, all right, I'm not showing you the whole, <laughs> I'm not showing you the agenda for today. Okay. Pitbulls. I don't know the, 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 the origins. Like I'm sure it's England and like, you know, and used for fighting. Dude, it's so funny. People go. Birds or no? Bird hunting or no? No, no. Fighting pig fighting and dog fighting people are like they weren't used for that really for dog fighting then why the hell did they make they, them they that were way? doing them in england is that i mean staffordshire is in england right yeah so i, I assume they sort of come over i'm not a historian on pits but like the funniest argument to me is when i go yeah yeah they put the terrier in them what a ter- what does the terrier terrier group do i'll give you a second to think about the akc terrier group and what they do okay you got it here's what they do they grab animals, they shake them until they stop moving. They grab rats, they grab animals, they grab... That's what they're for. They put the terrier, it's a pit bull terrier, they put the terrier in the pit and put it in that group to grab an animal, shake it till it stops moving. Does every pit do that? Of course not. That's the group they're in. They're in the bite and shake till the animal stops moving group there is going to be some my my dog my first dog bosco once got a squirrel and he bit it and shook it i'm not saying it is and killed it i'm not saying it is only in that group by any means but it's a little more in the terrier group to bite shake till the animal stops moving that's why they put it in there for dog fighting then people go it wasn't for dog fighting then why the hell did they make the perfect looking dog fighting dog if it Mm. wasn't like that's designed for it. Malinois are designed to jump through a window. That's why they are the size they are. That's why their brain is the way they are. You want to Mal- Dobermans are designed to look really awesome. That's what Pipples were designed to bite and shake and do it with a power that is unlike and a and a motivation that is unlike any other breed. You can we can argue a lot of things about pit bulls, but you cannot argue their body and what the, what they're made for and why they're good at it when they want to do it. And their strength. It is unarguable. And you are not an honest person in this debate if you cannot admit to the truth of things you lost the argument already and i know i, I like get in like, i'm fighting with somebody you're, you're like bro you want to go <laughs> so somebody in the comments said that the bite power psi wise is similar between a rottweiler and a pit bull now if that is true pit bulls are uh smaller than rottweiler so it would still be impressive if they had the same amount of bite power i i would if i had to guess i would probably say pit bulls are have more bite power just because they look like physical specimens not to say that rottweilers don't but i i imagine if you shaved a rottweiler like fairly close it still would not look like a pit bull well their mouth is different but their jaw and their neck is like pit bulls can actually have a pretty long or excuse me rotties can actually have a pretty long nose and so as you get that nose longer you get the canines more away from the body which loses the, the shake. Yeah. So bite power is one thing, but there are so many other things to the force than bite but power. But would neck, neck, neck strength, strength be important? Shortness, stubbiness Shoulders of probably the dog. almost, right? The ability to whip something back and forth. Yes. Right. I think the main, I think what it is, is we don't have any issue with pit bulls. No. We have an issue with some pit bull owners. We do have an issue with pitbull. Now, some we are not ten percent. We, I speak for Joel when I say this. We do not support dog fighting, um, right, Joel? Right, Joel? Of course. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that everyone not knew people that. in the comments do. Some Bro, people do. Some people are like, take the muzzle off that dog and let it let they, it fight they your go dog. fight Prince. I'm like, what the hell is wrong with you? like? Yo, this you is want, not a f- they want that. This isn't Fight Club, bro. That's what it, and I'm just, I'm always confused. It never ceases to confuse me. And there's many comments about 
oh, Prince can win when the dog's in argument and a muzzle. Yeah, I'm not, we're not looking for Prince to win. There was we're a guy, there's a guy who commented on a video of yours and he's saying, yeah, this is how you get your dog seriously injured. And I may I or may not have responded. And if I did respond, I might have said, yeah, that's interesting because Bosco was like 10 years old and never got hurt. And then Prince was like, Prince it's four years old and hasn't got hurt. So maybe Joel just knows what he's doing. Bro, I was going to say the same thing to that comment. I, was I saw it go, twice. Listen, like, what is that when you like do a test and like the, the numbers just, there's so many numbers of it yeah. that something never happens that it doesn't mean something couldn't happen. But my I think God, it's like a the law of large numbers, like, or maybe like to some degree, if you have enough of something, if you do, if you roll a dice a million times, you're going to get a certain, you know, a very small edge case. You're going to eventually get it. Uh, uh, you know, like if, if Prince worked with 700 billion dogs, like, yeah, he's probably eventually going to get bit, but if he works with 10,000, he probably will not ever yeah. get bit. Yeah. Yeah. No, if I do this for the rest of my life and I go through six dogs, I, I, so then I have to weigh what is the help to society that those two dogs have done and the small, because I have so many um, measures in place and criteria in place that have to be met before that dog is ever not on a muzzle mm -hmm. with my dog or any other dogs that the system has borne out that yeah. it works. Could something happen? Yes. But it, when that something happens, how many dogs have been helped in the process? I think it's don't try this at home to some degree. And yeah. it, I think it's it's one of those things where if you see a uh, gymnast, right? You see a gymnast, right? And they do like a muscle up onto the bar. Yeah, and what go, doesn't take risk? By you the way. go, that's probably pretty easy. I mean, look at that guy. He just whipped himself up on the bar like that. I'm sure it's easy to do okay. because the guy just did it real fast. So then All when right. he sees you, oh. right? So you, they come they come in. Um, they're barking at the fence. You're like, this guy's going to meet Prince. He needs a muzzle first. Right. And the leash is all your different tools that you use. Yes. So you get there. Well, you know, you've got the 10,000 hours of, yes. you know, to become a master, so to yes. speak. So you're working with the dog and it, it's a pit bull and you're, you're working with them and you start to see positive, like behaviors that you want to see. And you're going, okay, this is good. And then you continue to push him yes. and you're not seeing anything bad. And you go, you know what? This thing doesn't need it. Yes. Yeah. But just because you can do that doesn't mean Joe Schmo, who just got his pit bull, knows when to take the muzzle off. I know. Why would he? I know. He only but thinks he knows. I don't even love that. That Listen, don't do anything I do at home. This is my, I'm not going to, I might eventually put it on this thing. Who the hell is doing what I do at home? Like, I just don't think it's a thing that people look at and go, I'm going to do that because there's two variables in there. There's actually three variables in there. There is Prince, there is me, and there's my facility. I think people watch my videos, unlike other dog trainers who go, I could do that. Like, I have more variables in it to a degree when it comes to Prince and a dog. Just dog training is dog training. They don't have the dogs. They don't have the, well, they don't have a prince or the dog. They don't have the facility, which is used in a certain way. And they don't have me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, yes, we could say, don't do this at home. I just, my gut tells me people aren't trying to do what I do. I think they are trying to introduce a dog. aggressive dogs to other dogs in their family and do not know how to do that. <sighs> okay. We've done videos on like. Yeah, be careful. Be careful with that. All you're saying is. Do not try this at all. <laughs> okay. Final word. Don't do what I do. Like, yeah, like do not copy it, but like, yeah, this is how it's done. <laughs> if you ch choose your own adventure, right? If you want to do it, then do it. But like, hey, Listen, this is a free country and yeah. you have free will. Uh, is it a free country? It's still free. Yeah. Pretty free. We're, 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 we're pretty free. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Don't do this at home. Double checking. I was yeah. just curious if it was free or not. Yeah. So, okay. Now that's good. So let's keep, let's go hard in the paint for like f a, a couple more minutes on pit bulls, on pit bulls. Bro. Um, because you're not really painting them in a positive light. So I'm going to have to, you know, talk about how great they are. Um, what so let me give you an example of a good am I going to paint in a completely positive light? Like the, what breed am I just like, it's the gr pugs. 
There's like golden retriever is the dog that bit me the most I've ever been yeah. bit. Now it doesn't mean I'm going to say they're coming, bad, though. a bad breed, but like they, all these breeds have their challenges. So 20 years ago. And listen, if they've killed the most people, they've killed the most people. Well, am I saying something you don't know? Am I, is this, is this not news? Wouldn't you say like, and we're going to make so many people mad here. Wouldn't you say though, like a press a canario is basically yeah, just they're a just big not that ass many pit bull though? <laughs> I would say that. Like, like a lot of those dogs. And I guess you, you could say, and, and maybe correct me if I'm wrong here, which you always do. Maybe if you looked at the dog, like a, um, what is it? Is it a borble? It was either, bar I think it was Connie kind of Corso. Like it was Connie kind of Corso, the one we just did, right? Mm -hmm. The, um, what was it Three called? Ago. It was the um, yeah, Raising Connie kind of Corso. Oh, right, right. That one is like, it looks a I little like kind of an American courses. bulldog in the sense that it does have more jowls. Whereas I think the Presa Canario has a bit more of a square jaw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. like a lot of those dogs, I'm like, yeah, you're just a big ass pit bull, right? That's what you think. When I look at them, I'm like, it's... They're more mastiffy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think when you see that mastiffy yeah. face, then you go, they're not as much a pit bull. Like okay. there's certain ones that have a bit more, like yeah. a boxer is not a pit bull. It, the facial structure is a lot different looking. Right. Don't to you think? You. Yeah, I do. Not just to me, to everybody. Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Connie Corsos, I'm like loving them more and more and more. Every one I train, you like I'm more. liking them so much. I love them. They're oh. all like, they all have hold back in them. They are all protective. They are they come from a good place, those Kane Corsos. They are not out looking for problems. They don't want beef. They'll, they'll, they won't start the fight, they'll end it kind yeah. of deal. Bro, they're awesome. Like, like how often is it where the breed where I'm like, Everyone I train has this characteristics. Like if you took a golden retriever, like you could, I guess you could say, oh, they're nice. Like, but there's very rarely like, like I'll have an outlier. If 10 dogs, five dogs come to me, there's an outlier. That's just like, mm -hmm. it's an outlier. It doesn't act like the breed. At least one in five, maybe two in five, definitely one in 10. All these Connie Corsos, they come to me because there's a problem. Yeah. However, they're freaking awesome. Yeah, you're like, you got a good dog here, right? I mean, they're all good. So, I mean, they're kind of gnarly and they're coming to me for a reason, but their nature is all good. So don't go buy one because the, 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 the Connie Corso people are going to get mad at me. Don't go buy one. The, the big wigs who have Connie Corsos on YouTube. So as far as Connie, so I love they Connie Corsos. Me, but... Let me tell you the dogs I love. Oh. Uh, I love Connie Corsos. I love Dogo Argentinos and I love Borbles. Do you know why it's I love them? It's about my them? list too. Why do I love them? Because we've done videos with them. And how do the videos do? <laughs> oh, yeah. They kill they did it. well. They always kill it because everyone sees this yeah. massive, yeah, even yeah, yeah. the one that you just did, the Connie Corso one, it, it was a quick, it was a fairly quick private session. Wasn't a ton of work that I think went into that one. Yeah. Just kind of put it out there. And I thought it was like 60,000. We just put it out a couple of weeks ago. Like it's doing good. It's just yeah. going to do good. Yeah. Um, so I love those dogs. So explain to me as the lay person, which I am Connie, I always think Connie Corso, Presa Canario, Dogo Argentino and Borbel. I just kind of put them in the category of just some gnarly badass dog. That's huge. Yeah. What are some other differences besides this quick one that you did about the, the, um, you know, this like loyalty or this very like good coming from a good place. Like, you want me to literally just do the dogs you just said? Just like maybe a couple points of like, like how they're maybe a little different. Just from your own well, experience, not yeah, AKC, yeah. No, Wikipedia, I get you. BS. I get you. One, I haven't trained, I haven't trained 30 barbels. I haven't trained 30 Presser Canarios. Hmm. No one has. How about Dogos? No, nobody has trained that many. Because there aren't many enough, enough of them. I'm not in Argentina. Mm. I'm not in Africa. I am not, and I'm not saying there's even borbles all over Africa. I'm saying there is no Amer If I haven't trained, I have trained. I guess if I owned a borble, I would train some of the borbles around this country. Mm -hmm. There's simply not enough of them. So I hesitate to get into. So Cane Corso. Oh, there's a lot a, of Connie Corsos. There, as a actual breed, is a more popular breed than the others. Significantly. Okay. So that's like, 
Yes. It's not beagle level, but it's yeah. it's up there. All like borbles, the ones I've trained, they're they're pretty awesome too, bro. Like they Which hold one, borbles? I I do a lot with like hold back. Like if you're going to be a big gnarly dog, like you can't go off half cocked. I'll never forget the short or the long video with the the best trainer that we've dealt with who is the NFL guy. Um did he win? When, when, yeah, I think he did. No, he didn't. Um, well, you were wrong if you didn't make okay. him the best. But yeah, yeah. Uh, when when that borble goes past Prince, it's like such a cool thing. I know. Because it's just like powerful. And he's just like, hey, bro, I don't got a problem. I know. But he's like, I mean, you're, you're more than welcome to create one. Yeah. You know, but he's fine. He's and so Prince confident. Prince was cool and he was cool. They yeah, were two cool. confident guys shake hands. They're like, hey, what's up? Adults. Sniff each other's butts. And then yeah, they're... full adults. Neither of them, they both have attitude. Yeah. So, so he's, let's, let's say that guy's as good as Prince. That's, that's pretty good. Which, which of those dogs that I me mentioned, maybe press a canario, are the most like a general pit bull on the street physically? Did you say Dogo Argentino? I think so. Then yeah. That one. Dogos are? But they, like they are now. very specifically. There's a prey bread, huh? aspect to it. Yeah. With doggos. Is that the same with pit bulls? Yeah. There's a chase grab aspect to them that is not in borbles or not in caucus shepherds or not. Those caucus shepherds and uh, uh, um, um, mastiffs, um, Tibetan mastiffs and these really gnarly dogs that are giant. And if there was a more of them, they would be on that kill list because they're so damn big, but there's just not that many of them. Mm -hmm. There's a, and borbles and stuff. There's, there's a, there's a big dominance deal to them. Then there's dogs where there's a big prey deal to them. Mm. Run and get that thing. And when you get into run and get that thing, you get into problems. <laughs> Trouble. Yeah. You get into just don't mess with me or I'm going to freaking pin you. You go I on my feed on Instagram or YouTube shorts is like caucus shepherds and Tibetan. And they're all about the pinning mm. there. And they, they, they have these big caucus shepherds on leashes and they let them like fight for a minute. They're, they, they, they're not like trying to kill the other one. They're trying to like assert their, sparring, and they'll bite right? each other. And then they just, these, these Turkey, Turkmenistan guys or whatever, like pull them off and everyone's fine. They're sparring. They're sparring as opposed to some dogs are like, yeah, let's do this. Like they're someone's going to gonna die. Yeah. They're actually trying to kill potentially. Yeah. And that's the difference. And you can't actually get mad. And at, that's dangerous. You can identify the breed, but you can't like get mad at a breed in the sense that like somebody bred it into him. Like if you look at the Dogo Argentino, they were very, and I read a lot about them when we were doing other videos oh, yeah? about it. They, they were very clear on how they were trying to breed them and for oh, what really? purposes. Yeah. So they were, hmm. they were looking, they, I mean, I property do, protection. Yeah. I mean, they, I think it gets into the, prey, the prey stuff. Yeah. There's a lot of it. Yeah. I mean, they call them like the mountain lion hunters kind of right. or whatever, right. right. There's that, um, element to it. But, um, the thing about, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's hard to get mad at a breed that you created, right? It's like AI. It's like, don't create AI and then get mad about it. I agree. Bro. That's why I have a problem with pit owners. Yeah. So that's why they have a problem with pit More owners. More than anything. But I do think they are really nice to look at. I know my, my, uh, pit bulls you're talking about? Yeah. My wife's dog, who you've helped, Mia, yeah. is half she's pit bull, pit. half, yeah. no, she's half pit bull, half boxer. So that's why she's like dark, uh, kind of that grayish color. Yeah. Um, but really such a sweet dog. But I remember having to go into the house, um, when I, when we weren't living together, right. When I just, okay, hey, can you get my backpack out of my house? And I'm like, yeah, is your dog there? <laughs> you know, and then totally. you're like, you're going in there and it's like, Rrr. I mean, it was like, oh, I actually screenshotted that comment from last week. I thought it was a super interesting point. Um, maybe I'll say the person's name later, but the point that they made was about last week when we were talking about, I believe it was Rottweilers, you were talking about the dog that, you know, pickles. Right. And you went to the house, but you were on the outside and the dog was like, what's up, bro? A little bit to you. Is yeah. this right? Yeah. And so they said, they said that, um, it's almost like, and I might be misrepresenting what they're saying, but it's like, it's like a location thing. It's a, it's a place of business is what they were saying. Yeah. That's kind of what I said. They, they said, yeah, they said, Hey, you're friends. But when you go yeah. to my work, yeah. 
I'm going to yeah, act in a different way. Did you read that one? Yeah. I thought that was a good way of thinking good. about, uh, that was good. maybe a, a hunting dog is going to act differently in the field when yeah. it's hunting. There's no friends out there. Yeah. Then when it's at the dinner table. Yeah. Right. So all these things come into yep. play. Yep. Right. Yeah. Okay. Give me three things you hate about pit bulls and then we'll move on. Hate. Three love, hate, whatever you want. Something to get somebody back. Hey, hey, uh, any big powerful dog owner, uh, get your dog out of uh, uh, shopping centers. Bro. Shopping centers? Yes. Someone even commented that. And my wife, I told this on the first podcast, I want to say cruising around a store. Our kids were not with her, luckily. She walks around the corner. There's just a giant pit there. She almost falls over the dog. Bro, that this isn't... No one knows if your dog is nice. No one knows. You know, good for you. No one else knows it. Yeah. I'm over it. Society needs to change this nonsense. I doubt you'll be able to find the last comment, but it was almost the same. They were, or maybe they emailed me. I get crazy emails, dude. We should talk about the emails I get someday on so, this podcast. But like, get your dog restaurants. I'm not saying to not take your dog. I train dogs on video to go to restaurants, but like it's enough with, uh, listen, you want to take a little dog that even if your dog bites somebody, it's not a big deal. What about, no one knows if your dog's great. You're the only one. Yeah, You're the only one, bro. Get them out of stores, just chilling. And like people have to like yeah. avoid your dog and like, oh, and the people are just standing there with their big dog. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're in the back of the man, they're like, yeah, you avoid they, mine. You avoid my. It's your job to avoid my dog. What they, is that? It's enough. But they never say, we've joked about this in the past. They never say, oh, hey, he's dangerous. Back up. Right? They never say that. They're always yeah. oh, a sweet dog. Yeah, he's a sweet dog to you. Yeah. yeah, it's like pickles, right? Yeah. It's like, hey, he's a great dog. He's a great dog to me. Well, not he's not great when I'm out in front of the house and he doesn't, he's not recognizing yeah. why I'm there. And no I think that knows. dog's really smart, right? That Pickles, Pickles is smart. He knows exactly who you are. And he knows that you've trained him. He knows that you watch him. But he's wondering, why are you out in front of my house on the other side of the window? Yeah. That seems like some intelligence there. Intelligence? Maybe intelligence. You know who loved Pitbulls? DMX. Rest in peace, DMX. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He did. DMX was awesome. <laughs> Bro. You want to get pumped up? Yeah. What is it? Rider. What's that song? Yeah. Rough Rider. Rough Anthem? Rider. Yeah. Anthem. I mean, bro, it doesn't get any better. Yeah. He was. It a, gives me chills, bro. Dude, he was. Really? <laughs> That's true. He, he was, um, he had pit bulls on the cover of his, of his albums and stuff, but he always talked about how he loved, like he loved pit bulls the most of any other dog, but he loved dogs more than people. Mm. And he was like saying, like, he actually seems like a really good dog owner. Oh. Like, like, this is actually funny because this will this will be the last pit bull thing we talk about at least for a little bit. Um, I was going to tell you this. Twenty years ago, I was with a girlfriend. We went to her friend's house at an apartment in like Mira Mesa or something, and he had three pit bulls. I think I might have told you the story. And these pit bulls had taken over his home. It was Lord of the Flies. It was like, like they oh, were they yeah. tore up his whole house, and yeah. he had no control over any of the pit bulls. Like they literally owned him. I mean, it was wild. And I remember, but I'm like thinking about DMX. I'm like, come on. DMX didn't have, have that happen to him. A guy who does Rough Riders is not taking crap from a dog like No, that. DMX ain't. No, he'd be like, Arr! right? Do whatever. Yeah. He would do that. Bro, and, and pits are like any, like you you run the show. Yeah, you have to. Yeah, I mean, any of these dogs we've been talking about. Roddy's press canard like you and so Bert Kreischer. Yeah, the guy Kreischer, he, whatever. He, there's a short and I Netflix. wish I would love no, don't bring there was something else I wanted to bring up. Just he says on Joe Rogan, I think he says I was buying a not a Connie Corso, a Dogo Argentino. And he goes, I was buying it from the breeder, and the breeder goes, You gonna let this dog sleep in your bed? And Bert goes, Oh yeah, of course. And he goes, I'm not selling you the dog. He goes, the breeder goes, you let him sleep in your bed. He owns that bed. And eventually I would add to it. He owns that house. No. Oh, Joel, this, that isn't real. That's, that's not real, Joel. No, no, no. It's very real. 
He, it's he, freaking very real with the breeds that we've been talking about in this podcast in the last 20 minutes. So all of them. He calls it, it a doggo, real. a doggo Argentino. Oh, yeah, I think he did he call does, it a wrong name. Yeah, he said it was a doggo Argentino. Yeah. Um, but the other thing though is I'll challenge you on what you just said. Okay. So uh Joel Beckman gets a Dogo Argentino. Okay. As a puppy. Yes. Sleeps in the bed. Yes. The whole time. Does Joel have a problem with that Poss- dog? Possibly. Possibly. You're you are a big believer well, in the the, bed the issues with the beds. Yeah. The beds, the the holy grail. Is this some type of like Sigmund Freud situation? Like what is the yes, driver? It is. it is. And I don't say it to my clients. Because you don't want to be because awkward. I don't want to get weird, but I want to say it to my clients. If you see it on the video, I go, yeah, I kind of, you'll see me hesitate in the video. I'll go, it's like a single woman. I go, your dog sleeping in the bed with you? And they go, yeah. And I don't care about sleeping in the bed. My dogs slept in my bed, all of them. They also don't challenge me ever. Yeah. And they're not like, like they never would. Like I could allow that. Dog, but my well, dog's not a dog Argentino. Argentino. Do, maybe. But don't you think a dog Argentino could potentially submit and no even in the bed yes i don't bro this is getting weird you awkward. get to that point of that dog looking at you certain breeds this is not all breeds this is certain breed press uh uh caucus shepherds you get that point where that dog looks at you and you go i'm taking that out of your mouth and he goes we might do this and you've got you have a you have a choice and you either got you're gonna take it or you're not. And you gotta be if ready you to fight. don't, and you gotta have your, you gotta have your wits about you. You gotta know when to go, when to give a little, when to, when to cool it off, when to rip, when to go, this is my thing, dude. And they'll respect it. Yeah. But like, but you could, you see. might have to have that with these, with these breeds. And you wanna get a real one, you wanna get a real, a real, a breed that's that's that you're getting and you're keeping it neutered and you're you're getting it to be this gnarly dude, you might have that point, or you just really do good from a young age. Did you them. say what was it called? A Caucasus Shepherd or no? Yeah. Is that from like the Caucasus Mountains or no? Yeah. Okay. That's crazy. So that's like where Khabib's from. Dagestan. Yeah. Well, you can that imagine areas. then how hardcore those dogs are. They're probably tough as nails. Yeah. Yeah. So so what I mean. You, you have to understand, I think the thing, what you're saying, maybe we get like do some uh, Dr. Phil diagnosis here, but what you're saying is you could potentially be going, let's just say Prince as an example. Yeah. Maybe Prince was had a different environment. You start being his owner and you're fighting over something and he's like, I'm not giving it up. But then uh, with your experience, you're like, I need to, I need to exert my dominance in this situation. But then you look at him and you're like, This dog will bite me. Then you have a choice to make, which is, have you heard the term going to the wall, right? It's like, it's like, okay, you can take it as far as you want to take it. And maybe that dog knows this guy will go to the end of the earth to win this and he will not back down. Now, is it worth getting your hand bit? Maybe, maybe you have to be willing, but if you're not willing to get your hand bit, you might need to take the dog back to somebody who can handle the dog. That's right. Right. That's where we're at. That's where we're at. That's my, my zoom session today. Really? Well, I was like talking, this dog's attacking both the people in the house on the Zoom session. Where, were, what part of the world were they from? Can I say? I don't want to like call them out. It doesn't matter, Yeah, but right? how would they know? <laughs> no one would know. I Buffalo? Mean, New York? Yeah. Oh, okay. No, no, I'm just curious like what part. Because I know you get people from Germany and all. Yeah, yeah, Buffalo. And I'm, I'm like, guys, I'm not going to tell you a bunch of stuff on here that's going to possibly get you bit. Like I can't yeah. tell you can't do that. to do this and it's scary stuff can i do a commercial real quick yeah so you what we're talking about is 30 minute telephone sessions that joel does for a fee on his website is that right yeah and so it's not a zoom session more or less i mean it can be but it's you prefer to do just a telephone call i do just a shorter zoom sessions are an hour it takes a little more work to set up zoom yeah it it can be a pain right so but so you do that. And then I don't, I wanted to do this from, and if you're time. out of the country, do a, no, do a zoom session. Okay. Don't do a phone session from out of the country unless you're going to call me. Yeah. Beckman all day. This Merch. is, this is my favorite 
my favorite uh, pint glass. It's also my only pint glass, but I use it every morning. I use it for soda water. I also use it for my second cup of coffee. I have it all ready to go. Ice coffee. Um, yeah. So we have some merch. We talked about doing another press of some different style merch. So yeah. if you've got some certain ideas, you've also seen a lot of the artwork and stuff that we put out. So if you have any cool ideas, drop them in the comments. Uh, we'll read those and let us know. But um, anyways, yeah, we'll make sure. I think there is not a discount. So maybe we'll try to see if we can add the Unleashed one because I think it expired. My mom needs a discount too. She kept texting me and I forgot to text you oh, about just the, whatever the code is for the pod. No, it went away. Okay. She went mad. away. It was she knew June. it was going away. And she's she, like, ask oh, Eric to get me the oh, thing. It was the 12th. They had this other new one and it was sponsored by Spring who makes all the, the stuff. And so they said that they it was 20% off, but they were they were going to pay us as if it was a normal price, which was really nice. Now, that we don't make nice. enough money. So right. that's why we need to do that. Yeah. But um, I was like, oh, we've been given 10% off and we make way less money. These guys are going to do 20% off and we make even more money. So then I dropped it on there, but the other one we said would, would expire in June. So let's throw it on there. Try to do the unleashed. We'll see if we can get it back on there uh, for ten percent off. Okay. So what are they? What are they? Right in. I think it's just capital or just unleashed, just like it says up there. Capital, all yeah, all unleashed. So uh, it's a good way to support the channel. Uh, exactly. Look at you did a great job. You're like Vanna White over here. Yeah. Um. So anyways, yeah, a couple. There's a couple, but anyways, I wanted to just shout that out because yeah. sometimes people go, hey. And then one little public service announcement. Um, being a podcast, it is very difficult to diagnose very complicated issues while talking. And so if you really have issues with your dog, you might just need to call Joel and do an actual session. Yeah. You know, you and talk we're not, to me. We're not even selling them. You don't even care if they do or they don't. It's just... That's the really the they're appropriate. Full. Why would I care when yeah. they're full? Now you can yeah. say, hey, as a businessman, you should add more, Joel. Yeah, I should. There's only so much time. Should we raise have... the price, Joel. Yeah, I should. I don't, but yeah. If you're there's only so much you can do. And you don't want to you also want to be able to have it read like somewhat available to the public where it's already getting your prices are getting to the point where like not they're not maybe Caesar Milan prices, but they're on their way. Yeah, we haven't changed raised prices in a while. Yeah, let's let's raise. Hey, them. can I finish my thought yeah, yeah, on ahead. the sleeping in the bed thing? Yeah, because you're like, is it Freudian? It's it's not, but it is. So, I, I you'll see me in the videos, like look at a client and go, yeah, the dog's doing A, B, and C. Yeah, that's bad. Yeah, they shouldn't sleep in the bed with you. And they're like, oh, and I'm like, yeah, it's kind of like they're not on the level with you that you are. Like you're up here, and they're kind of down here in life, and like they need to know that. But they, the dog literally is like, you're my girlfriend. Like we're, we're, yeah, we're, we're dating. We're like together. It's like you and me. And like, why wouldn't I on the street, like tell people to get out of here? The dog's like, we, we, it's not, even, it's not, it's not Freudian in that it's, it's a level thing. It's a, we both are in this, this bed. The dog, it, their, their brain is like weird. You know, they, it's an inflated sense of self is what they get. Yeah. They get some. And if it, your dog's great, who cares? Let them sleep in your bed all day. I don't care. Yeah, the issue becomes if you have problems, right? Yeah, that's, that's the, the only thing. That's the first thing. Um, yeah, and then imagine the poor guy who, like you said, when it's a single gal, and then she's like, got the Dogo Argentino in the bed. And then she's like, I'm going to bring this guy over to the house. Like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he, he's never getting in the bed. The Dogo Argentino is like, you want to go, bro? Right, yeah, it ain't happening. It's gonna cause problems. Then it's a giant problem. Yeah, some girls giant. dating a Dogo Argentino that's out of control. You're like, no, we're not gonna work out. Yeah, it's not gonna happen. Yeah, because I'm gonna put my money on the Dogo Argentino. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's some dogs where you're like, okay, that guy's pretty big. I'm gonna put the money on. I'm gonna put the money on the guy. You know, Dogo Argentino. Yeah, maybe if you're like a world's strongest man or something, but yeah. Well, they have teeth. They have teeth. They're going to cause problems. That's They're the going to be able to bite you, right? It's going to be hard not to get bit. Very hard. And you get a helmet. You look like an American gladiator. Maybe you can, you can fight them off a little bit. But yeah, it's a good thing the age group of people watching dun, 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 is dun, like dun. in the forty range when you're busting out American gladiator stuff. 
Well, 30 for 30 just had something on ESPN yeah, and about Netflix it. just had a show on American Gladiator. Maybe it was Netflix that I yeah. saw. I could have been wrong, but I was a big American did you watch Gladiator it? fan. Yeah. The Netflix thing? Oh, no. Oh, it was pretty it was actually a, a little bit more about the guy who 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 kind of like they said, I don't want to get sued here. They said he stole um the idea from this like guy who was actually doing it in like Pennsylvania. Oh. And they grew up and so it was, inter it was interesting. I give it a 6. Yeah, I'm not watching it at a six. It's not great. It's not Sopranos. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Let's not do the Sopranos yeah. again. No, that's at the end. Oh, you have a plan. We okay. have an end. The end of it, we talk right. Sopranos. What are, what are we doing? More comments? You want some? Okay, here. Let me... Uh, no, can I talk about something different? Yeah, what, whatever you want. So I don't know if I added this to the list or you added it. I think I added it when I was in Hawaii. But uh, I was... We were leaving. The wife was going to get banana bread. Like right before we leave, you got to get banana bread, get ready. And I see a woman with her dog and she- In the airport. No, no. This is be oh, right before we great. drove to the airport. Okay. And so she was, she had her dog in a baby carrier. Yeah. You know what a baby carrier is? Yeah. Okay. I mean, it was a, maybe like a bulldog and it was wrapped near the bosom. Like it was- Oh, in one of those baby carriers. Yeah, of one that's on your or body. Wear, yeah, you wear them. Yeah. So yeah. she was wearing the dog like the way a lot of people wear their baby. Right. So she was wearing it as she was walking through the parking lot. Yeah. And the first thing I didn't want to be rude, but the first thing I did was like get my camera because I wanted to send it to you. And then it turned out blurry. The second one, it was hard to see. And then I'm sure I probably freaked her out or whatever. Yeah, yeah but, probably. But either way, I was like, she's carrying her dog in the baby carrier. Now, I wonder if they do that in the uh, in Dagestan or yeah. in the Caucasus Mountains or in right? any difficult part of the world, like in Russia, right? Like maybe in like in India, maybe in um, in Africa. like Moscow, Moscow, however you want to call it. Maybe yeah, maybe there they do, but like probably not in Siberia. Probably not, right? Yeah, what yeah. are your thoughts on? I don't want to say baby carrier. I want to say baby carrier slash ultra humanization of your dog in a way that like Paris Hilton. They're was not going to like my answer. No one, no one's going to like my answer because everyone likes to trash people that do things that are out of the norm. I'm going to say, if your dog doesn't have a problem, I don't care what you do with your dog. So you're only about dogs, not biting people. Yes. And biting other dogs and biting my children. Okay. If I don't, I give a rat's behind what you do. I don't care if you sleep with your dog in the bed. If it doesn't have a problem, no, I don't care. So the, you don't think that behavior makes it creates worse? problems? Depends on the dog, right? Sometimes those dogs are old. You know, Hawaii's hot. It's a bulldog. It's like it's, it starts walking. It starts breathing too much. Like I'm giving the lady a benefit of a doubt. Does it's humanization crazy. hurt your dog? Yes. Does it being in a little thing hurt your dog? Um, it may, maybe. Isn't it part of a, the same vein though, of some of the purely positive stuff that is like purely positive trainers would hate that more than I do. Really? Yeah. Because they're pile honors. I feel like I, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Have you I, ever I, went into the brain of a purely, purely positive po person? Yes, I was one. Okay. They, they, how to explain this? And I'm not saying I'm right about this. I think purely positive people would very much, purely positive isn't about like, they're more like, sci they, their brain works more like animal scientists. Yeah. Animal scientists are against that stuff. Does that make sense? Their brain is very much like, like a scientist, not, not in how it thinks. And they, they think, how, how do I say it? Um, they very much align with scientific thinking about, about controlling language and about, I just, I just don't, I think purely pot. It's not about the softness or the coddling. They caught purely positive coddle in a way. And in a way they, they're not about it in a way. I'm not being very clear because I don't have that much of a pin, opinion yeah, on it, you know? Yeah, no, that's fine. I had a interesting one before we got to the comments. I had an interesting one, I thought. And maybe if you don't want to do this one, we could do it on the next podcast. 
just because I think it could be like a segment maybe, but maybe not. Um, this, this idea of dogs and cats coexisting in a house. Dogs and cats living together. Total mayhem. What movie? I don't think I got it right. Ghostbusters. You know, you would make fun of right. me for my, the way I say words. You say it more mayhem than mayhem. Mayhem. I do. You do. You mayhem. Mayhem. Yes. Go ahead. So, so I saw it in the comments when I was talking about it, but I think it's interesting. Like what? The dog versus cat in the same house. Not dog oh. versus, but just, you know, Probably. somebody's got a cat and they're introducing a dog or We're getting versa. a cat. Do you think Prince is going to be able to handle it? Oh, I love it. We'll hunt it down like a, what is it called? The person said a, a ratanera is like a, a rat a rat hunting dog or something like that out of Spain. I can train Prince whatever I want to train Prince. You could have a- Prince could hate that cat. You wouldn't catch him with him in his mouth. But like, he's not going to, he's, and it's going to be all, I'm going to, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to walk in the house with the cat like this and I'm going to tell Prince, we love this cat, bro. This cat is a part of us. This is a part of me. It's the same way you walk in the house with a bit newborn baby with your dog. Did you, you don't go, Ugh, here's the baby. Ugh, here's the cat. You go, this thing, you don't mess with this thing. Look how close this thing is to me. It's the same as my handshake method when people come over. We love this person. This thing is a part of me. You don't bite me. You don't bite this person that I love. They're in the circle. Did circle of trust. And that reminded me of the... Um... What is it called? Meet the parents. That always reminds me of that when you say that. Yeah, I it, I know. Me too. <laughs> Circle of trust. I still say it. I think of meet the parents every time. But what was Jinx your question? Too. Dogs and cats. Yeah, no. I let's cover it next week. It's more of like, oh. like how do you integrate dogs and cats? It's probably a. You want to know the problem with that? And hmm. I say it to all my clients about dogs and cats. I'm like, the problem's the cat. I mean, the dog has a problem. But I go to people's houses. I've done this so many times over the years. Dogs and cats problems. And if we take the dog and we put it on leash, and so I'm going to do like reinforce the dog when it's when the cat's in the room, and if the dog like gets the eyes, I'm like snap out, hey, and then like reinforce, do the whole process. And the cat goes, and the freaking cat bah, comes bah, bah. out, and he's like the he's like creeping through the living room like the creepiest cat in the history of the world, and I'm like, that's oh, why your dog you know, help look me at, out. Look cat. at that cat, like yeah. the cat's a problem, is what you're saying. The cat is the problem. Yeah, no, and, that's fair. And it's not that the cat is being uh, is the creepiest cat in the world. It's that the cat has been chased by the dog. What's he going to do? Just sometimes he comes in all creepy because he's like, where's the dog? It's just this cycle of badness. So they say cats and dogs, right? But if you think about, um, there is a level of instinctual tendency, right? Where you see a cat or the dog sees the cat and it takes off. like, And it doesn't appear that it's thinking. It looks like it sees the cat. And it goes. It's Have you not seen thinking. this? You've seen this. A Just, dog go after a cat. Like, but I mean, like, it sees it and it it, it does. It's yeah. A, it's not even a split second. It's yeah, just yeah. Boom. There is a special dog cat thing. I would say there's a special dog bunny thing, dog squirrel thing. I'd say oh. there's a special dog chase little animal that run away thing. It's a prey thing. It's a prey drive. So, what do you think about? So, did we ever post the video? of the squirrel that you nursed back to health? No, I didn't. We were going to. It died. It died? You killed it? No. Yeah, we didn't kill it. It just died. It was not doing well, though. I mean, we were like feeding it. But you were feeding it like carne asada burritos, weren't you? Yeah, enchiladas. <laughs> Guacamole. It just, it's, it's just, I don't know. I mean, you it's found tough. it. It was injured. Or yeah. It wasn't doing well. Yeah. I mean, it was on like in a parking lot. Like it Yeah, wasn't. just like laying there about to die. Yeah. Yeah, that's um. Hmm. Yeah, it died. Yeah, it reminds me. Like I feel it's like it's still in our freezer. The Sarah, are you serious? The well, it's in our Lachlan. other freezer, and my daughter pulls out the other day. It's like, why is the squirrel still in here? It's at another freezer. It's not at our house. I just wanted to say the Sarah McLaughlin thing, that song, Arms oh, of the Angels, yeah, yeah. or whatever it's called. I wish we could play that right now, just like oh, a moment of the silence. Squirrel a moment death. of silence for the for the squirrel. Definitely a moment of silence for DMX. Yeah. All right, what Wait. else we got? Okay, you want more? I, we could do this all day. Bro, do this we've all got day. like 20 minutes or we can end it whenever the hell we want to end it. Don't True. leave us though. No, don't leave pod us. Pod people. Yeah, okay. The let, pod. Let me, let me bring up something different. Um, yeah, let me go to the comments. 
Can I talk about something real quick? Comments yep. from the last. So everybody who would have dropped already is going to be gone, right? So it's, it's an hour and 30 in. So everyone here is like the true blue pod they, Beckman family, right? Yes, yes. So can I just real quick do the Soprano thing? Yes. So there was a comment. We talked about the Sopranos last week. Yeah, there was a comment about the Sopranos. And, uh, oh, here it is. I have it here, right here. I know. Pac, Pacampara, Pacampara. Joel never had the makings of a varsity varsity athlete. As a soprano, I don't even you'll have to explain that reference. As a soprano's mafia head myself, uh, I wouldn't mind hearing you guys talk about mafia movies and culture. Ha ha. Uh, you laughed out loud about it. And then he said, um, what do you laugh out loud? What do you think happened at the ending? Was he whacked or not whacked? If whacked, who do you think whacked him? Uh that yeah, that was basically the deal. Okay, so I'm a big Sopranos guy. If you didn't see the podcast last week, giant l l watch podcasts of the Sopranos. Not it. a lot. I've seen like two episodes, but um, Tony, uh, Uncle June, constantly or hate that guy. He says he says uh, you're not, but he's a great actor and does an unbelievable job. Yeah, but he says you're that. Tony's not the make, and it makes Tony really mad. What, and oh, so is he, that who said it? He said it about, yeah, Uncle June said it about. What did he say? You don't have the makings of it. Yeah, he, he, he's athlete. like starting to get old yeah. and he just kept saying it and Tony would get so mad at him because like, it's like Tony's like a, a guy who wants to be, and he, he loves his uncle. He the, loves Uncle June in the show. It's like his father. In the way. weird thing about the show, or not about the show, but it's an interesting part about it is that when you're watching it, you're like, okay, can he whack this guy so he can be the boss? Right. And then Uncle he has June, to, you mean? Yeah. Then he has to start taking all this crap from Uncle June. Yeah. And you're like, bro. And then like June becomes like a problem. Yeah. In the show. Like he he's difficult. And so it's like they didn't just give you what you want, which is just that Tony just kind of bull rushes through and just starts dominating. Well, there's family. dynamics. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you like got he wasn't you old create enough. intrigue and there's intrigue in families. And even though it's a show about the, you can't kill everybody. Like not in the show yeah, or in you life. You want the character to be the boss. Yeah, but being a boss, bro, you know that. You can't just go firing everybody. Yeah, but like, look at John Gotti, right? So here, l but let's answer the question. So you can oh. answer it wrong and then I'll answer it correctly, which is- I'm gonna answer it what correctly. What do you think happened? And then if for anyone who's never seen the show, just mute it real quick. Or you probably would have watched yeah. it by now, I guess. It's been like 20 years, whatever. But <laughs> spoiler alert. They're in they're in the restaurant, right? <laughs> and at the very end, you, it, it goes, goes black. dark. No audio, no video. It's just black. Everyone, when it happened, I've researched yeah, everyone it. Everyone hated it. Everyone thought that there was a problem with their cable box. Yes. When it, happened. it was genius. <laughs> and I've learned to love it. So what what do you believe okay. happened? The question is what happened? Uh, they, they asked David Chase this. I follow things on Twitter that are like Sopranos things. People ask this question. Mm -hmm. You're not going to like my answer, which I say a lot on this podcast. Like, okay, it doesn't matter. Nothing happened. <laughs> Nothing happened. There's no answer. There is, there is no, there is no answer. There's no theory because nothing happened. You can have a theory. It doesn't matter. Nothing happened. It went black. There's no more. <laughs> That's it. And I start to write that. And then I, I, I like get so, I don't know. It, yeah. it, but I'm like, all I say is like, it, 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 when I was trying to reply to that comment, I started to write it and then it sounded like I was like mad at the guy who asked him the question. I'm like, nothing happened. Like, yeah. so I didn't write it. So I wanted to say it on here. That's well, funny. I'm glad I didn't even know you were bringing that up. But. I'm super bummed that you had such a terrible answer to that. It's the greatest answer it's ever. It's the answer of like, who do you think is better, a Rottweiler or a Doberman? You go, it depends. Yeah, it's it's a it's the bad answer, but it's the right answer. Do you want to hear the right answer now? Yes. Okay. So he's in there with his family. Everything goes dark. Yes. He was killed. And when you get killed, what happens? You go dark. Everything goes dark. You don't hear anything. Oh. You don't see anything. It's just it's interesting. Ends. Here's the problem with that. There is no problem with that. <laughs> it's great. Here's the problem with that. I will, if, if I did take the tact of saying something happened, which I'm not, nothing happened. 
the show literally ended. Mm -hmm. They're fictional characters. If I did take it, I would not take that because I cannot imagine Tony Soprano dying. Although he really died in real life. It would be horrible. Okay. Rest in peace, James Gandalf. Yeah. But like I would, I can't, I'm not going to accept Tony Soprano dying. I'm not accepting it. You're so you're ever. in denial. Is what you're yeah, saying. I'm in denial of your answer. It's like your dog is not bad. You're just like yeah, yeah. Tony Soprano won't he won't die. That guy is is so a I, man. He I is, can't. I can't. He has flaws, but he is he's a he's an amazing character. He's okay. I was gonna say a good human being. Uh, maybe not go that far. Yeah. He's a he's an amazing character. He doesn't die. So Walter White died. Because he had terminal cancer. That's why they could kill him off. Because yeah. he was going to die anyway. You but can't kill off Tony Soprano. I'm trying to think of a classic movie where they leave it up in the air like that and you don't know which way it would have went. But I'm talking like something we would think would be classic. But I did I think have... that was the first time it was done. But I think one of the... I, I just watched Pulp Fiction again. I hadn't watched it in like yeah, five years or I whatever. It. Love that movie. Um, Six months ago. But one of the things, and I know this, and this is why you don't want to read about this stuff because then it spoils it for you. But the if you remember, there's a case. And in the case, like it looks like there's like some type of gold in it because of the way it opens and it, it illuminates. And um, they, I watched an interview with Quentin Tarantino and he was like, there, no one knows. Like, I don't want anyone to know. Like, that's my point. Yeah, I know. Yeah, no, I know. That's what he says. But I'm like going, okay, it can only be a number of things, right? And the thing is, uh, what's his name says, hey, uh, Vincent, are we happy? And he goes, oh, yeah, we're happy. Like, it's got to be gold. It's got to be drugs. Like, there's only so many things it could be that a drug addict like Vincent Vega would not be it's, like. No, no, it's not impressed that. by it. Yeah. It's I don't what like Quentin Tarantino said it was. Yeah, but no, I get your point. You're like, yeah, it's, it's fun to guess. Yeah, but it's also I like it. um, you could also do some level of elimination, right? Like it has to be able to fit in a briefcase, right? So like you could, you know what it's not. So then maybe you, don't, you know what it is. But anyways, there was a video or there was another like choose your own adventure type. Use that term twice now uh, for all the book readers out there. There's two or there was a video or a movie where it had a similar ending where you just didn't know how it ended. And I just can't think of what it was right now. I have now. no idea. But, it was, you know, some big popular one. I'm sure people no will drop clue. it in the comments. But, yeah, so I'm glad we got the Sopranos thing out. I didn't want to tell you what my opinion was. But, you know, but what happens to mafia people, right? I know. They don't go to uh, retirement homes, generally speaking. Generally. You know, they, you know, the gangsters don't retire or whatever, right? So Tony Soprano, though, no, bro. Yeah. So, anyway, so shout out to the guy who put that comment in there. That was good. Joel, I like how he, like. I like how he's like, Joel doesn't have the main. He knew I'd understand it, obviously. And he like said it about me. I which didn't is get great. it. I thought he was making fun of you at first, uh, which is actually. Super oh, funny. you didn't. Yeah, that uh, would be funny, too. So this can we talk about comments or no? I like when when I first when things first started to go on, um, get bigger on YouTube. It was like people were like, I don't like his shorts. And it was like very f interesting to me. Like it never made me feel bad. It's like. They're noticing weird stuff. Yeah. Like they don't notice that anymore. It was really early on. So like you're for some reason. Sucks. Yeah, they're like, you need a new jacket, and I just loved it. It's like, yeah. what? Are, what are you? What? What are you watching? You're watching me. Yeah, you're right. Dude, like you're, my clothing choices. Your heartthrob, uh, Lisa something. I won't. I don't I have to say her whole last name. That's weird. Uh, I work two jobs seven days a week, and the only time I'm late is when your podcast comes out. I know. Lisa's great, dude. Do you know who that is? Have you seen no comments or okay? Oh, like no, I think meant like no in real life. Uh, it was Squactopus. That was the person who said it. I get it about pickles. The earlier, yeah. Um, well, pickles uh, the dog, not the yeah yeah about the being reserved at work or whatever. And then this one, Spanish Rotteneros, Rotenero Murciano in particular. Do you have you ever heard of that breed or no? Rossier, what? It sounds like Rocky Marciano. Uh, rotten. Ratonero Murciano? No, Spanish dog. In particular, or even just more general, the related greater family of rat hunting terriers. Would love to hear your wisdom. Greetings from Europe. You're like, I don't even know what that is. No idea. And then this person says, by the way, oh, same person. Uh, by the way, love the idea of having episodes on individual breeds. Well, you got it. You got a, a half-ass <laughs> half-ass raw water video. And a... 
just crap on pit bulls for and 20 a, minutes. And a half cocked version of of uh of pit bulls, you know. It's like well, you didn't think they were gonna be good segments, did you? Yeah, we didn't think they would be nice segments. Um th- this gal was saying, uh uh glad you saw my I think it's yeah, glad, <laughs> hey, uh glad you saw my comment on calling us the pod pack. I thought it worked oh. with the logo, the whale and the dog thing and being a podcast group, horseshoes aren't great. I rode competitively for 20 some years and shoeing started to protect the hooves, uh, the hooves. You don't need to read this from, from okay. So I anyways. read that. I'm like, I'm bo- I was no, well, she, is it the same lady who said she came up with the pod? Yeah. Oh, okay. Then I like her. There's, and, there's multiple people talked about horses. Horseshoeing. I know, but, but here, like, you know what I didn't know is shod. I don't know. What that shod means. is past tense for shoed. Really? It's a and horse then, term. And then it's rough shod. Yeah, there's a lot Riding of Riding rough shod. I've heard that. Everyone's That's heard that. That's from that. And what uh, it is, is. I thought it was rough shot. No, but you don't know what you're everyone, talking about. <laughs> everyone thought that's riding rough shot. I didn't. I thought it was rough shot because oh, I've heard that. people say I didn't oh, know what it meant. Wow. So rough, rough shot. So what I understand, and correct me if I'm wrong, because they always do in the comments, is rough shod is like um, they Ooh, use nails gosh. into the um, into the shoes. Yeah. And they actually have the, the nails can like come out of the shoe. Yeah. But it actually can that create like some type of stability. Uh, yeah, when the nails come out. I think, it, I mean, I don't, or no. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. When they come, when they protrude outside of the shoe to where yeah. it, like, imagine having like yeah. spikes. Wider. Yeah. But like riding rough shod. I just thought it was yeah. funny. So then I thought maybe shoddy. So I looked this up today. Maybe shoddy was connected in some way. The word shoddy. Like that's shoddy. Probably is. But it wasn't. Oh. It came up from some tapestry thing Bro, or something. But you want to know a term? Part. Like my clients say it all the time and my employees say, and I never correct my clients on it. Hmm. Nip it in the butt. It's nip it in the bud, right? I know. My clients, because the term, like I wanted to come out and get my one-year-old and nip it in the bud. Or n- they go, nip it in the butt. I never correct them because why would I? Bro, but- nip it in the butt. Shepherds do that. That's not what the yeah the 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 cattle dogs do that. <laughs> it's nipping in the bud. My well, where boy, does it come I was like nipping in the bud, not the butt. It where just does the sounds bud come like from? it. Nip it in the butt. But do you know where nip it in the bud comes from? That I don't know. I've looked up like I looked up um these things like red herring. Yeah, I looked that up once. I'm like, what? and and there's no answer. No, I know that one. Red no. herring. Red herring is a is a is one of the uh, no. I know it's a fish. But the idea behind it, it's one of the fallacies. There's like a, all the like logical fallacies and stuff. So a red herring, the point of it is like, I don't know if they mean like you put the bird up there, but the point is to draw your attention away from something. I know the point is to draw your attention. I feel like I looked it up and they're like, we don't know the origins of this saying. I feel like I, I read I mean, that. Have, yeah, I don't know what the actual origin. I'm just saying it, it's part of the like logical fallacies of like, I don't know what that means. So logical like, fallacies. Yeah. So there's like a list of logical fallacies in like in logic and reasoning, critical thinking and stuff. And it's basically like I did this in a class and it was essentially like there's different things. So exa- example, like a sl- there's like a slippery slope fallacy, generally speaking, which is if this happens and this happens and this is going to happen, yeah. this is going to happen. It does you it's they have like deductive and inductive reasoning like like you can literally go from here to there to there to prove the point versus like you have to basically kind of guess that it would get to that point. So there's like they have different levels of of uh, like different arguments, like cogent arguments, all this weird stuff. Hmm. So but the You're idea making is like, everyone smarter. Yeah. But somebody in the comments like knows. I mean, I haven't more than I haven't read this in 20 years, uh. um, but I remember it. But so then there's a list of other logical fallacies. Let me give you an example. You've probably heard of some is an ad hominem attack. I've that's, heard of that. That's where you attack somebody's personally. personally. Yes. I've heard and then that. there's also an appeal to authority. So appeal to authority is like, oh, you shouldn't have that general leader. Oh, really? Because Joel says that it's good. And Joel is the best dog What's trainer that ever. Called? Appeal to authority. Oh, where you kind of. OK, so you're not you're not you're not logically solving it's it's a fallacy in the sense that you're not logically solving the the problem for the person who is making a claim you're saying joel knows more than you does that is that a good argument or a bad argument it's a bad argument it is it's a fallacy well because because imagine you're good at it but what if you say joel why do you think it's like this and you go 
because uh what's his name tom davis yeah because tom davis says so so i just keep going up the ladder well well there's there's nothing to it because it's like somebody said something and it's like you could almost go to like the catholic church back in that time where it's like this is the way the world works this is what happens when you die because it's like it's an appeal to authority so there's no like logic or reasoning to it and then um, so a slippery slope is bad that's that's not a yeah good argument yeah i mean there are things that are legitimately a slippery yeah, slope are. but you can't necessarily prove it i got you and, and like you can't walk them through um, that makes sense and so there's levels of arguments essentially and that's what so all of these sayings a lot of them are in this logical fallacy under yeah. this umbrella yeah and we just come up with sayings for these logical fallacies um, because they're hard to explain. I don't know if it's because they're hard to explain, but so, okay. Ad hominem, right? The attack yeah, of the person is. straw man, right? So do you He's know about every, straw man? Yeah. So it's like, Oh, Hey, let me explain Joel's position. So Joel hates dogs, right? And he's really mean to him. <laughs> and he believes that everything he learned from SeaWorld is the way that it should be. Now I'm going to build up that straw man. And now I'm going to tear it down and yeah, attack him, right? Yeah. So that's why you're you're basically straw manning the argument so that you can attack the yes, argument. Yes. Yes. Right. Uh, slippery slope. I don't know what this is. Claiming Ever. that a single event will inevitably give rise to a chain of future events, and so that's obviously why it's uh, slippery slope. Though is always seems always true. I mean, like there when are people things. use it. You're like, yeah, that is a slippery slope. Like, but I, I get where it, it can't be proven. It hasn't happened. Then this one's begging the question. A Dude, Every saying I've ever heard of is like in this logical. I'm like fallacy blowing thing. your mind here with this. this yeah, is like I didn't know they all sort of were in the same thing. Yeah, no, yeah, it's interesting. So this one's called begging the question, a circular argument in which the conclusion is included in the premise, right? Yeah, it so it's begs like the lose. question. Yeah, and then this it one creates the question. Anecdotal, which you love, using personal experience or an isolated example instead of a valid Bro, argument. If you're gonna trash anecdotal especially that's where i'm going to draw the line especially to dismiss anecdotal statistics. evidence is way better than it's not frick bro if you live life for 40 some years and you have your eyes open and you see things and you see evidence it's better than we're going to do this test now i know you have talked to me about well if te- double blind is better and blah 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 Bro, a reasonable, smart person can walk around and live life and and know more about life than a test, I believe. Do you want me to? Yes. Put you, put you in your place. Yeah, and you might. So, so, okay. So you're right. There's a lot of things in the modern world or the, in the world that you can, uh, that you can just do observational evidence. I don't even like, trust double blind stuff. I don't trust any stuff. But, but so what you have to trust though, well, you have to trust that there is an ability to design, a, and this is where we get But into is it. there? Yeah. No, there is there is definitely, and this is what the science is actually, what real science, not fake science, but what real science is all about, is about, I come up with a hypothesis, and then I you know, basically do right. a double-blind study, control for the variables and so forth. But then what happens is you should have it all documented. You should not be biased. But then you should provide all of your studies, your your all the abstract and all the, the supporting document. You provide that to your colleagues. They can replicate it, right? So then they start trying to test it, right? Because I don't trust the colleagues. No, no, you don't have to. But but in a properly designed experiment, I know You're you should be able to properly. deliver right, what right, you right. did. And so, but here's the issue with the anecdotal stuff, right? Is so that with the anecdotal stuff is like you say, I believe that um, all white people are bad. Right. As an example, like someone Which makes I the do. assertion. <laughs> so uh, someone makes the assertion that, that all white people are bad. And so then um, you say, well, how do you know that? And then you say, you say, well, I have, let me, let me explain. So you go, my dad was white, totally mean. Right. Then you say, Joel, right. Joel's bad. Right. So you start going down the list of all this anecdotal evidence that shows that and they give you 40 examples of all the anecdotal evidence and you go wow they there might be something here but yeah. then you can go you can design something similar where you could go you have anecdotal evidence but i have different anecdotal evidence you could ask a thousand people now 
your anecdotal evidence isn't as valuable. But here's it. Let me give you a great example of anecdotal evidence not being good. I had somebody I worked with from a different uh, institution and they would come in and say, this is how you need to do it. This is how you run this business, right? We're like, okay, how do you know? Because this is how we did it at this financial institution. So it's like, okay, so the reason that it's good is because that's the way you did it the last year. Well, because I came from here and we did it this way. Now you're already seeing how you run into it. Now, the scientific way to do it, which is done in actually in like a lot of the testing stuff we do in, which is, I'm getting super boring here, but the way that we would do it is like, we could say it with AB testing with uh, our, our thumbnails, for instance, you could say, here is one thumbnail, here is another thumbnail. Ooh. We're gonna show these and we're gonna thumbnails. Look at the right? Yeah, we're gonna show these thumbnails because I could say, you know, I think this is better because they, or whatever the experience yeah. on this. But if you can look at it, you can actually put them side by side, which is like a, a double blind study, really. And like you're showing, yeah, uh, not the same people, you know, but you're showing a, yeah. a, a thousand people one and a thousand yeah. people the other. Yeah. And this one gets five percent click through. This one gets ten percent click through. Yeah. On a long enough time horizon. Yeah. You know, it's it's it becomes it's evidence. Right. Yeah, it's evidence. Now, usually on that whole line of thinking, it gets to the point where it's like almost impossible like everything is a theory right that's why like the theory of relativity is a theory because yeah. it, it can't really be proven like yeah. the speed of light stuff yeah so and it, it will survive until other theories pass away but i'm just yeah. saying to end that spiel yeah um anecdotal evidence it matters it, yeah you you it's if you don't have any other evidence anecdotal evidence is very is important for you. You have trouble because you're in dog training where a lot of the scientific stuff is like generated from veterinarian and other like organizations that have an agenda that they want to, or reasons they want to publish stuff. So it's a little different. Whereas like what I, and this is why I love business, right? Is because uh, when you're in business, you want to provide the best product a lot of times. And so you want to market in a way that is the most effective. And so you're less not totally, but you're less likely to, um, right. You know Run what I mean? Into, um, yeah. The biases that you yeah, have are biases. biases right? yeah. You, 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 so you go, well, Hey, let's. And so this is what we always try to say is like, why don't we be a data driven organization? Why don't we, why don't we do the test and let the test bring right. us back? That makes sense. Yeah. We're going to go hard. We yeah. went hard in this freaking podcast. We, we went always hard, go hard, bro. but we're going to go hard in like areas that we think well, they're in the dog world and yeah. So that's, um, we think our people are going to like, like we don't care about. Yeah. That's the, I mean, so anyways, that's hard. the whole logical fallacy. Those were the red herring and there's a bunch of them, but I don't know if there's like an official list of them. I just had, we had a book and it had all yeah. the, the I like those things. Yeah. So there's, but anyway, so the point is, is that, but when you, if you look at them and you read them, it's actually very interesting because once you identify like all of these kind of like I don't want to say fake evidence, but it's, you know, because if someone's like, hey, um, I don't know who's a really smart, like Elon Musk, like, hey, Elon Musk said it. It's like, okay, that means more than Joel saying it if it's about right. physics. But right. at the same time, just because he says it doesn't mean it's the truth, right? Like we can't. Kind of does, but yeah, I know what you're saying. Oh, no, no, I know what you're know saying. know that you love Do, bro, Elon. Bro, uh -oh. It's so funny. I thought of like, I'll read an article and it's like, by some dumb author, like the lowest, like, like some Our author journalist, dumb? journalist. Okay. Like just some, the lowest 24 year old kid that's writing about works at some online thing or something. And they're like, where Elon Musk gets it wrong about something like, no, 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 no. If you think Elon Musk, if you think you know more about this than Elon Musk, you're 99.9% you that it's it's i'm yeah. not saying elon musk knows everything i'm saying elon musk in the areas elon musk chooses to speak yeah. about SpaceX. i guarantee knows more about it than a what are we calling them a journal than a journalist we're not talking about some book person who works for the new york times who's written 10 books we're talking about some loser journalist at slate yeah he knows more than you the article yeah, I wouldn't even do it. I wouldn't. Well, you know write... why they do it, right? Is so all of this stuff. Like Does, you on... know what I'm saying, though. Like, yeah, yeah. like it, I would be embarrassed to write that article. But so Yahoo Finance, they're not embarrassed. And Yahoo, if you look at what they do, like just scroll, like just scroll down on just Yahoo click. and look what it is. It's nothing but like 
It'll be like Elon Musk, uh, Warren Buffett, Donald, Donald Trump, Trump Joe, uh, Joe Biden, right? It has these like polarizing figures in every, like every third article is about those people. And if you look at Yahoo Finance, which I've nerded out on for 10 or 15 years, if you look at it, like every fifth, a lot of times, every like fifth article is about Warren Buffett does this. Like Warren Buffett hasn't even written a book and people are like, oh, like Warren, this is all the stuff Warren Buffett. Cause they know if you say Warren Buffett, people okay. click on his name. I get why Yahoo does it. I get why people click it. Maybe I clicked it. Here's what I don't get. Hmm. I don't get why I, I don't get why that journalist isn't embarrassed because they make money. I I can actually True. identify with them as a fledgling. Is that the right word? Fledgling YouTuber. I realize that there's a very big um, conflict of interest with journalism. Where imagine so in the MMA world. Conor McGregor is like the guy, right? If you write an article about or do yeah, a video no, about one it. person, it'll get a hundred views. If you write I about Conor, it. it's 10,000. I know. So if you break some news about Conor, you will get crazy views. I know. If it's a lie, you're still going to get a lot of views. But I'm going to... I think that person believes that they that their opinion and where Elon Musk goes wrong on something Elon Musk actually knows something about, which is everything. I think they do think that they know more about it than him, but they don't. And in the back of their minds, they have to go like, I don't know, bro. I don't know if they actually, I think some of them are just obnoxious and believe they know more than him, but I think a lot of them know they don't know more, but just trash him to get clicks. Yeah. I don't think, I mean, Okay, I don't know much about SpaceX. I don't know that much about Teslas. I think they are pretty cool. I don't own one, but I would never, I have a decent schooling background. I would never think I know a fraction about any of those fields that he does. Of course not. I mean, that would be, a, I would have that to would be, be insane. I would have to be delusional if, yes, you to, would. to be that, right? So, yeah. you know, they write stories like how much do they really know about physics? Nothing. Yeah, I'm not talking about a story about Elon Musk's personal life. The one I saw it. What Elon Musk gets wrong about at whatever it was. Twitter. Everything about Twitter. Yeah, he knows a zillion times more than you about Twitter. Yeah. He doesn't get anything wrong about Twitter. Actually, you might not like where he's going, but he doesn't get anything wrong about it. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. What percentage of this podcast <laughs> are we have to cut off? I don't think we're cutting anything out. No. I think that like some people will love this and some people will be like, what? If they're still <laughs> here at this point, then it, they're... Dude, this is our first bro, two hour podcast. This can't just be... Um, it was a lot of dog heavy for yeah. 50 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> so it goes, it's going to go monologue of Joel breaking down the greatest science of all YouTube dog trainers, then followed tra by some Soprano stuff, some other operant conditioning stuff, and then conspiracy theories <laughs> hardcore politics and some other stuff right we should go yeah we are bro it's fun it is fun